This is going to be the toughest bit. This is incredible. The most exciting motorcycling I've ever, ever done in my life. We got to a point where we couldn't ride any further. Charlie's really injured himself. We're now part of the support crew story, you know what I mean? Please don't let anyone get hurt doing this. In this edition of Interview, we're joined by Swiss filmmaker Claudio von Planter, who's probably best known for your long way up, down and around series. Can you begin by telling us what was it like working with Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman on those series? Yeah, it's a very cool experience. Um, it came totally out of the blue at the beginning for the first series. It was 2004, so that's 18 years ago. <laughs> so I was still a baby. <laughs> <laughs> what was the most challenging part of making the shows? It's the endurance. And I, you know, I wasn't used to this kind of long journeys uh, at all. And, and the motorbike side was pretty new to me, the touring side, because I used motorbikes all my life since I was a teenager, but just in cities, because it's a good way to get between the traffic. But then suddenly being on these long adventures, you know, hundreds of kilometers a day, um, off-road sometimes, uh, that was, uh, you know, a, a different different scale on yeah, the endurance. Am I right in thinking that you had a little bit of a hiccup at the beginning of the first series in that you're your license had expired. Tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, it's just a joke, you know, always hiccups in life. <laughs> but that was uh, quite a funny one where, you know, I had my bike license in Switzerland when I was 18. I did actually truck license and then you got everything. You've got the truck, the car and the bike license all together and, and the bike for big bikes and everything. And then when I uh, ended up in the UK in 1990. They forced me three years later to switch the Swiss license to a UK license. But on the UK, they didn't recognize the big bike. They only gave me a license up to 125 cc. And I was too lazy to complain. Um, and because I only had a little scooter, uh, like a Vespa. And, and, uh, and so when suddenly this long way around story came along out of the blue totally out of the blue they called me up uh, they needed a guy who can film and ride bikes I said, yeah yeah I can ride bikes and then I suddenly checked and I realized the the, the license wasn't wasn't good enough you know so did you have I, to do your test again and so I had to do my test again there was no time to switch back to the Swiss license no, so the only option was to do the test again in the UK and I felt quite confident you know it can't be a big deal I didn't have to do the Siri just the practical test move around with the big bike but then of course I you know I, I failed because I didn't do my lifesaver looks and and so so they failed me and I thought that's it you know I will be you know I will definitely not be the guy on the show to film it but then the producers they they could suit they could see the big picture, they still kept me on. So I can only imagine what the camaraderie was like making the series. And did the guys play any pranks on you? I read somewhere that they would go to the local markets and every morning you would get up and there'd be something hanging from your motorbike. Oh, that was on the last one. Was that the last series? Yeah, yeah that was the last series, long way, long way up. That was pretty cool across South America. Yeah. Where they, you know, they have all these kind of little souvenirs um, you know they have little woolen bits on the llamas and and, and they like you know their special caps and, and so they they decorated my Harley uh, over over time it started to be like a, like a hippie it's pretty pretty cool and there was a even a, a llama was on it they called it the screaming llama because it was like that and uh, it was like Christmas, you know, every 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 day is something new, and uh, yeah, it was funny. How did you get into filmmaking? Because I believe you started making films in 1985, and back then you were doing more documentary style. You were working in a lot of war zones at the yeah, time. Yeah, I was. I was always interested in in politics. Yeah. And and you know, coming from a safe country like Switzerland. I was intrigued to, to understand more what happens in places where they have conflict. Yeah. 
and I had pretty good military service in Switzerland. Everybody has to do yeah. military service. And I was in special forces and mountain troops, trained for guerrilla warfare. So I was pretty, you know, I wasn't afraid about places where people shoot because I was just with my, I didn't take, you know, I didn't take my, think my training was particularly special yeah. uh, because Switzerland, you know, what do they know about warfare? They, they have, haven't had any wars for a long time. Yeah. But when I ended up in Afghanistan, that's where I started. I thought I can try and do a little news report in 85. And when I was there with the Afghan Mujahideens, I suddenly realized my training in Switzerland was absolutely, you know, top, hey. really, really good. And the main thing is I learned about the effects of weapons. Mm -hmm. You know, I just understood uh, infantry weapons, machine guns, grenades, mines, mortars. I knew what it does and, and that helps you to judge the situation. So you know where to stop. Yeah, when to pull <laughs> and, out. And, and when to pull out. <laughs> and and that's, uh, that's crucial in, this, in these places. And I, that's where I started in, in uh, tricky conflict zones. And probably that's one reason why I suddenly got hired on, on the Long Way series, because they needed a guy, one guy, who can do everything on his own. And because they only had one third bike. Yeah. So they can't have a team. And that's probably why they ended up with me. You also ended up in a foreign prison, which was mentioned <laughs> in one of the TV episodes. But I mean, elaborate on that for us, please. Oh, what were you doing? It's just, uh, it, it just happened. It's just a kind of uh, occupational hazard as a documentary filmmaker. You end up in a prison, you know you're on a good story <laughs> because somebody wants to stop you. So no, no, but it, it's that prison story. It just, it's, it was just unfortunate. It was after one of the trips I did in Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, when you get there, you flew to Pakistan, you got a visa, tourist visa, three months. And then in Pakistan, I hooked up with the Mujahideens in one of the refugee camps in Peshawar. And then you walk into Afghanistan and it takes you forever because you walk. Yeah. And so when I came back to Pakistan, my visa was expired um, and Unfortunately, I got stopped on a police checkpoint in the northwest frontier province where anyway, you're not supposed to be there as a yeah. foreigner. So that's already one thing. You are a foreigner in a place you shouldn't be. And then the visa is expired. So the local police guy, he just wanted to have a bribe, a, a fee for my, a penalty. And I didn't have any cash. And, and so he kept us in prison uh, overnight. I was together with a French guy. Yeah. And he, both of us, he told, you know, he told us, call your embassy to sort out yeah, the yeah, money yeah. side. The result was my French colleague, he was out next day and I called the Swiss embassy and they were said, yeah, but that's illegal. You should have known you cannot travel in a country uh, with an expired visa. That's against the law. There's nothing we can do. Oh my goodness. And so the result was the police chief, he was so angry and he just sent me to central prison of Rawalpindi. And then, you know, once you are in the system to get out, it just takes a while. So How I long did you take a, to get out? Months. It took a month. A month. Yeah, 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 it took a month. You're here in Dubai in the capacity of you're supporting the Dubai Motorcycle Film Festival. It's a pretty special community. You know, why are events like this important? Yeah, it's, it's quite, quite fun to see that all over the world you have people coming together, you know, with, because they have this common passion about motorbikes. And, and here, um, I actually haven't, I haven't ridden bikes here, but what I hear, it's, it's really very, very good out in the desert, yeah. you know, for off-roads. I think you must have all sorts of races here. So it's quite impressive. It's, it's a vibrant community here. When I suddenly realize so many people got inspired yeah. um, by these films, the Long Way Round series. Um, and that's why they did their tests. That's why they uh, bought the bike and yeah. started to, you know, go out there and discover the world. It's just a fun way to discover the world. Claudio von Planta, thank you so much for joining us today. It was fabulous to meet you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs>